we want to find the function y of x for x greater than zero that satisfies the separable differential equation dy dx equals the quantity nine plus sixteen x divided by xy squared with the initial condition y of one equals two. So because we know that the differential equation is separable, our goal is to write the given differential equation in the form where we have a function of y times dy equals a function of x times dx. Once we have it in this form, we'll integrate both sides and then solve for y. So we're given dy dx equals the quantity nine plus sixteen x divided by xy squared. Let's begin by writing this in differential form so we can think of multiplying both sides of the equation by dx, which would give us differential y equals nine plus sixteen x divided by xy squared times dx. So we want a function of y on the left and a function of x on the right. So we don't want this y squared here in the denominator. So if we multiply both sides of the equation by y squared, or if we want y squared over one, notice how on the right side, the factors of y squared simplify to one. So now we have y squared dy equals, notice here we have the quantity nine plus sixteen x divided by x. Let's write this as two separate fractions, as nine divided by x plus sixteen x divided by x, and this is multiplied by dx. Now let's simplify this right side. Now notice how here a factor of x simplifies out. So we have y squared dy equals nine divided by x plus sixteen times dx. So finally we have a function of y times dy equals a function of x times dx. So now we'll integrate both sides of the equation and solve for y. Well the antiderivative of y to the second with respect to y would be y to the third divided by three plus a constant, but we'll also have plus a constant on the right, so we'll only put the plus c on the right. So this is going to be equal to the antiderivative of nine divided by x is the same as the antiderivative of nine times one over x, so we'd have nine times natural log. Normally we'd have the absolute value of x, but notice how here we're told x is positive, so we can just write natural log x plus the antiderivative of sixteen would be sixteen x, and plus our constant, which we'll call c sub one. Now we want to solve this for y. Let's begin by multiplying both sides of the equation by three. So we'd have y cubed equals twenty-seven natural log x plus forty-eight x plus three times c sub one. Let's let c be equal to three times c sub one so we can just write plus c. So we have y cubed equals twenty-seven natural log x plus forty-eight x plus c. Now we want y, not y cubed. So now let's raise both sides of the equation to the one-third power. We could also take the cube root, but let's use rational exponents. So now we have y, which is actually a function of x. So let's write this as y of x equals the quantity twenty-seven natural log x plus forty-eight x plus c raise the power of one-third. So this would be our general solution, but now we're told that y of one equals two, so now we'll find the particular solution, which will be the solution to the initial value problem. So if y of one equals two, when the input or x value is one, the output or y value is two. So this would give us the equation two equals twenty-seven natural log one plus forty-eight times one plus c, all raised to the one-third power. Well, natural log one is equal to zero, so this would be zero. So we'd have two equals, this would be forty-eight plus c, 
raised to the one-third power. Now to solve for c, we want to undo this one-third power, so now we'll cube both sides of the equation. which gives us two to the third or eight equals, if we multiply these exponents, we'll have the exponent of one, so we just have 48 plus c. If we subtract 48 on both sides, notice how we have c equals negative 40. So now that we've found the general solution, and we just found the value of c, we can now find our particular solution, we'll substitute negative 40 for c. So our particular solution would be y of x equals the quantity 27 natural log x plus 48x minus 40 raised to the one-third power. Now before we go, let's go ahead and graph our solution over the direction field that would correspond to our differential equation. So the direction field or slope field is graphed here in red. Because we know that y of one equals two, our solution should contain the point one comma two graphed here in green, and our solution is graphed here in blue. First notice how our solution does pass through the point one, two, and it also fits nicely in the direction field, meaning the slopes of the segments in the direction field do appear to give us the slopes of the tangent lines of our function at a given point. I hope you found this helpful.